Hey guys, what's going on? Jeb here, and in today's video, I'm going to be showing you a chart formation here on Bitcoin that has only ever happened one time in the history of the cryptocurrency, one time. And that was just before the start of the 2016-17 bull market. So guys, in today's video, I'm going to be showing you this pattern in conjunction with quite a bit of shorter term technical analysis to try and see if a longer term bottom is forming. In today's video, you're not only going to learn about this pattern, you're also going to be learning about how shorter term and longer term technical analysis comes together to form one cohesive market. And you'll also be learning about all of the current market forces that are driving Bitcoin's price action so that you can go and make informed trades. If you guys enjoyed today's video, likes are very much appreciated and subscribers are always welcome. So if you enjoy the video, consider doing both of those things. And before we dive on into it, guys, I do want to remind you that the Black Friday, Cyber Monday sale on the Cryptocurrency Technical Analysis Academy will be running for another 24 hours through the end of Cyber Monday. So if you guys want to learn technical analysis and learn how to do what you're going to see me do in today's video, a great place to do it is at the link in the description down below. There's a $40 off coupon code down there. More on that at the end of the video. But anyway, guys, without much further ado, we've got some work to do. So let's go ahead and dive right on into it. I'm not going to make you wait any longer. I'm not going to save this pattern until the end of the video. I'll go ahead and show you up front so that we can dive into it. Out here on the weekly chart, I've been talking about this for a little while, guys. These two moving averages are very important. We're looking at the 100 weekly moving average and the 50 weekly moving average, specifically the crosses between these two moving averages. In CT2A, there's a video on golden and death crosses, and there's also a video on moving averages. When you combine those two, you actually get a very powerful, very important chart formation in Bitcoin that normally is a strong indicator of Bitcoin's price action. When a shorter term moving average crosses above a longer term moving average, that is called a golden cross. Now, normally a golden cross is considered that way when both of those moving averages are moving in the upper upward direction, but they can still be a golden cross if one of them's trending downward. You'll see why I said that here in a minute. Point is, guys, here, if we go into the BLX chart, as you know, this is the oldest chart on Bitcoin. This compiles data from many different exchanges going back nearly 10 years. And on this chart, we can see how these two moving averages have played out here on the weekly chart for the entire history of Bitcoin. As you can see, there's not a lot to look at. These two moving averages don't come in contact very often. In fact, I can number on three fingers the number of times that it has ever happened. We had a death cross right here where the 50, this red line, crossed below the 100 this gray line. That was a death cross. It happened towards the end of the bear market. We had the 50 cross back up above the 100 right here at the beginning of the 2016-17 bull market. That was a golden cross and led to this entire bull market. And then we also had a death cross right over here back in March of this year where the 50 crossed below the 100. That is exactly three times in the entire 10-year history of Bitcoin that these moving averages have ever crossed each other. One thing I want to point out here is that the death crosses between these two moving averages don't seem to mean a whole lot. They seem to show up right towards the end of the bear market in the accumulation phase. So we can kind of write these off and not pay much attention to them, which means that there's only really one time that these two moving averages have ever crossed that it has been of any significance. And it was right here in May of 2016, a little over three years ago. But guys, it's about to change because if we look here on a shorter term chart, so it's updated, we can see that not this week, but when the next weekly candlestick opens, it's almost guaranteed at this point that these two moving averages are going to cross and they're going to cross bullish again. Now, I know what some of you are going to say in the comments section. You're going to say, Jeb, it's not a true golden cross because the 100 daily simple moving average is not trending to the upside. That's why I mentioned that earlier. I know, believe me, young Padawan, I understand that. But the reason that it's still important is because we've only seen it happen once and it had a very clear correlation with price action. Not only did a bull market follow it, that could be correlational. This right here, if you zoom in a little bit and see what happened just after this cross right there, that looks causal to me. I don't know about you. Maybe I'm missing something. But the fact that we had this cross on this week and then the next week, we started a four-week uptrend that saw Bitcoin jump 75% in price on candle bodies, not on wicks. That seems important to me. Tell me if I'm wrong in the comment section down below. I'm going to add some caveats later on in the video, but I think it is important. So yes, even though the 100 is curving to the downside at the time of recording this video and when this cross happens, I think it's still going to be relevant. And guys, of course, we're not only going to make a video about one technical indicator. One of the worst things you can do in technical analysis is make a prediction based off of one indicator. So let's look at a few more. One caveat I want to add to this is that even though it's very important, this was a different market over here. I still think it's going to carry a similar result. We'll talk about that later, but it was a different market. I'll show you a few reasons why in today's video, but I think in general, they're similar enough that it's important. What I mean by that is back here, Bitcoin's MACD was bearish. And after we had that golden cross and broke to the upside, it led to an uptrend on the shorter term chart and the MACD went very bullish on the weekly chart. Something very similar might end up happening here on the weekly chart, if not a little bit more delayed. As you can see, this MACD is significantly more bearish than it was the previous time we had this cross. And it's going to take more time for these two lines to cross each other. The early 
earliest I see our MACD lines converging and crossing each other is sometime in January. But that all being said, in previous months, Bitcoin has continued to fall on its MACD all the way down here to the histogram so that we are able to reset and so that we're able to have more room to run to the upside. If you guys know, MACD is similar to the RSI in that it also gives overbought and oversold signals depending on where our two MACD lines are. So as we continue trending to the downside, that is actually going to be a good thing for Bitcoin because it allows for that MACD to reverse sometime in the future. It would have been very hard for us to have sustained a bull run with how quickly we popped off over here. It's difficult for Bitcoin to go much farther on the MACD. This is the second highest Bitcoin's MACD has ever been in the history of the cryptocurrency. We give it some time. Furthermore, guys, the weekly RSI is getting extremely oversold compared to what you normally see on the weekly chart RSI. It's sitting at around 40. And if you'll notice, that's actually an important level of resistance here in the RSI because that's where Bitcoin would fall down to every time it came down to the price target of $6,000. Well, it just so happens that Bitcoin's trading about $1,000 above 6 k It makes sense. Bitcoin is coming down to a well-established level of support on the weekly chart, and that cannot be ignored. Now, guys, if you know anything about weekly chart RSI, you're also going to know there's another level of support right here that Bitcoin is unfortunately below, and Bitcoin normally stays above that during bull markets. This bull market that we're in is clearly a little bit different than the previous one because we've had a little mini bear market, but I don't think it's going to last. Bitcoin needs to get above 51 on the weekly chart RSI to continue moving bullish. But nevertheless, Bitcoin's RSI on the weekly chart being this low is another good sign, actually, because it indicates that Bitcoin has more room to run, and it means you're getting a good deal if you're making a trade based off of the weekly chart because that RSI is oversold. Now, there is one more weekly chart thing I want to show you, and it's a caveat. It's a difference between the previous time we had a golden cross and this time that we're having a golden cross, and that is the inclination of the 20 EMA. This is a very important moving average. As you guys in the Cryptocurrency Technical Analysis Academy know, it's the last video in the entire course. It's there for a reason. In the history of bull markets, Bitcoin very rarely goes below this moving average while we are actually in the bull market. In this case, Bitcoin popped off a little bit too fast and managed to fall below it. But I think Bitcoin is trying to establish a bottom somewhere above 6K. We're going to talk about short term here in just a second. So Bitcoin being below the 20 EMA does indicate that something might be a little bit different with this golden cross than it was last time. What I'm trying to say is that just because we have this golden cross this time, I do not think we're going to jump 75% like we did last time. We are nowhere near as bullish or as neutral as we were back then. But I do think that it could be the start of something on the longer term that could take several weeks or several months to play out, moving on up into the beginning of the happening, especially because I think this is happening pretty close to where the yearly bottom for Bitcoin is going to be following the $14,000 high. And with that said, guys, let's go ahead and move on to some shorter term technical analysis because I think it's really important that we dive into that as well, especially considering, like I said, I think Bitcoin is trying to put in a shorter term bottom here. One of the first things I wanna show you guys is over on the longs and shorts chart. This is the longs chart on the hourly. I've shown you this a couple times, but this is getting a little absurd. We are up 38% in the last nine and a half days. That is significant. I mean, we went from 24,000 to 34,000 Bitcoin longs in a little over a week. For perspective, here is the history of the Bitcoin longs chart. That is a historical move. That is major. Now, what that does not mean, it does not mean that Bitcoin is going to rally and blow up and just go straight to the moon because everyone's bullish. But what it does represent is a way that we can gauge the market sentiment and the mass psychology of our Bitcoin market here. People are longing the living hell out of Bitcoin and the reason they're doing it is because they think Bitcoin is done with this downtrend right here. And yes, I hear all of you contrarians in the comment section saying, oh, but Jeb, Go against the masses, they're normally wrong. Use contrarianism, Jeb. And while sometimes I agree with you, in this case, I think it's a very important sign because we have not seen the longs just blow up like this in a very long time, especially since Bitcoin put its $14,000 high in here, especially considering we're nearly 50% retraced from that high. I think we're getting very close to a bottom. I think that golden cross on the weekly chart is helping to substantiate that. And I think the longs are proving that people are getting a little tired of it. But it doesn't just have to do with what the longs are doing. It doesn't just have to do with the longer term technicals. It also has to do with the shorter term technicals. So let's look at that briefly before we wrap the video out. There's something really interesting going on down here, guys, actually, because as you can see, we're on the one hourly chart. Let's go ahead and look at this. Bitcoin has some downtrends right here, some lower lows. Bring up the RSI. What do we see? Bitcoin has some higher lows. Let's go ahead and make that the right color. Guys, look at this. Downtrends on the bottoms of the chart and uptrends on the bottoms of the RSI. That's classical bullish RSI divergence. Four words, four words, you need to know. Very important words. RSI divergence is such an important concept that if you look back in the history of Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies, almost every time that you see RSI divergence show up, it's critical. Let me show you. Right here on the hourly chart, we had higher lows on the RSI, lower lows on the chart. 
Guess what? This rising wedge followed. I could go back for a very long time on the chart showing you RSI divergence and why it's important. Needless to say, it's something you need to be paying attention to. But guys, once again, that's only one technical indicator, so let's continue looking here. One thing I find very interesting is that the four hourly MACD, and the four hourly is far more important than the hourly in this case because this is a longer term move that we're looking at here. The four hourly MACD is starting to converge bullish on itself. You see these green candles down there? That means that the MACD line is moving to the upside to meet the signal line, meaning there's more than likely going to be a golden cross unless something crazy happens on Bitcoin today. Combine that with the daily chart MACD having already crossed bullish and just waiting for a prime opportunity to start moving to the upside again. And we're looking at conditions where Bitcoin could be starting a new uptrend. And it's really interesting timing that all of this is happening too, guys, because if we look at the daily chart on a slightly cleaner chart, we're gonna notice we're right below the 20 daily exponential moving average. That is a very interesting place for us to be because the 20 exponential moving average on the daily chart is one of those moving averages that Bitcoin likes to be above when it's in an uptrend and it likes to be below when it's in a downtrend. It's the moving average that we talked about Bitcoin potentially rejecting off of four days ago, and that's exactly what happened. We need to get above this so we can start like a medium term uptrend on the four hourly and the daily chart. And then we can start moving out here to the weekly chart and getting above the 20 EMA up here at $8,500. If we break that, guys, we're off to the races. $8,500 is the price to beat. So guys, here's the deal. We have a lot of longer term technical analysis converging with shorter term technical analysis, converging with the fact that we've been in a downtrend for the last several months, converging with the fact that people are getting much more exuberant on Bitcoin as evident by the longs continually and consistently moving to the upside over the last nine days. I think that we are trying to put in a longer term bottom. Now that might not happen today. It might not happen this week. It might not even happen this month or technically this year. It might happen in January, but I think it's going to happen and I think it's going to happen above $6,000. Now, by the way, everything I'm saying here does not conflict with what I said yesterday. There is still a pretty good chance we come down here to 68 and we invalidate that shorter term stuff and then it gets reestablished in a week or two. That's still very possible. This RSI divergence throws a bit of a monkey wrench in that, but we'll see what happens. Point here, guys, is not short-term nonsense on the hourly chart. The point here is the longer-term technicals and what Bitcoin is going to be doing from here on out. Bitcoin has a prime opportunity to make use of that golden cross because of the market sentiment, because of how far we are retraced from the yearly high, and because of how much more room we have to run to 20K before we even hit all-time high. The fundamentals are better and stronger than they ever have been, and I honestly see no reason that we can't trade all the way up to $20,000 sometime in 2020. That has always been my prediction. It's been my prediction for over a year now. The very next thing I want to see Bitcoin do is get above the 20 daily exponential moving average. That would set a higher high on the shorter term charts. And then from there, continue setting higher highs and higher lows all the way up to the 20 weekly exponential moving average and start to move from there. So guys, that's my take on the longer term and the shorter term technical analysis right now. Personally, I think Bitcoin is any prime opportunity to start a longer term uptrend. But like I said, that might not happen this week. That might take a little bit of time. This is not a short term prediction by any stretch of the imagination. I'd love to hear what your take is on this in the comment section down below. Let me know if you learned anything. And if you did, tell us what it was. And one more thing, guys, I wanna get your feedback. How do you think I can improve the videos here on YouTube? What do you think we did well? What do you think we did poorly? What do you think we can improve on? I'd love to hear your feedback on the comment section down below. I'm about to be investing a lot of time and money in upgrading the studio here that I'm recording in, the camera, the microphone, everything. There's about to be a major jump in quality here on the channel over the next month or two, so I would love to hear your feedback on that. I already know the camera and the microphone equipment I'm getting, but anything you'd like to see in the background of the set that I'm building, any kind of editing techniques or overlays or lower thirds or anything you want to tell us about that you think would fit well here with the channel let us know and we will jump right on it i want to give you guys the best videos here on youtube i want to upgrade the production quality here on crypto jeb to the highest of any of the cryptocurrency youtubers love you guys but i'm about to outpace you but anyway guys i do want to remind you one more time before the end of the video that the black friday cyber monday sale is ending today and it is actually ending today i'm not extending it again if you guys want to join the cryptocurrency technical analysis academy and learn how to do everything we just did in this video this right here this kind of stuff you need to know this it's very important that you know this a lot of this introductory stuff you probably already know this is for absolute beginners so that anyone can take the course where the actual amazing content comes in is down here in the technical analysis section there are 34 videos in this academy over 10 hours of content Content that will teach you basically everything you need to know to hit the ground running in technical analysis. Guys, one of the things I love about courses, I actually just bought an academy. I bought Graham Steffen's YouTube Creator Academy for any of you guys out there. Great academy, great information. I'm very happy with the purchase. I've also bought Ricky Gutierrez's course. That's over $500 in courses I've bought. I believe in courses. The reason courses are so amazing is not because you can't find this information on YouTube. Some of this stuff you can find on the internet, you can find on Google, but a lot of this stuff I wasn't able to find on YouTube and I wasn't able to find it on Google. I had to learn it the hard way. 
I want to spare you guys from that because learning it the hard way can take a lot of time and money. I promise you guys, it's going to take you much less time and much less money if you go through the Cryptocurrency Technical Analysis Academy and learn all of this in a structured manner than trying to learn on your own. I guarantee you, you're going to get some value out of this. And while I can't guarantee your results, I'm pretty sure it's going to be a lot easier than trying to do it yourself. We have almost exactly a thousand members in the Cryptocurrency Technical Analysis Academy right now, guys and they are absolutely loving it. If you'd like to hear from them, join the Discord server down below and see what they have to say. Anyway, that is pretty much going to have to wrap it up for today's video, guys. I hope you did enjoy. If you did, go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button. But like I said, guys, that is going to wrap it up for today's video. I do want to thank each and every single last one of you for watching, as always, and I will see you guys in the next video. Peace. Oh, I got a real good feeling.